Today I'm showing off this light demo in OpenGL and C++ with multiple colored lights and multiple light sources. So as you can see here, we can just fly around the world. And if we get up close to something, we have a little spotlight, like a flashlight or something. Then in the world, there's these four light sources and they emit a colored light around them on these crates. As you can see, this one's red, this one's yellow, and then there's a skylight so like the sun or something that illuminates just sort of all of the boxes a little bit and it illuminates the top of them. All right, so if we go into the code of this, we can, we'll start with the fragment shader as this is where most of it's done, but we have three kind of lights. We have a spotlight, which is the flashlight. We have a point light, which are those cubes. And then we have a direct light or a directional light, which is the sun in this situation. And then we have a material, which this is used for the texture of the boxes. So we define all those up here as structs. Then we set number of point lights as a variable as at four. And then we take in as a uniform, a direct light, four point lights, a spotlight, and a material. And then in the main file, we calculate a normal for each box. We calculate the view direction. And then we do a result and we add the dir light, all the point lights, and then the spotlight to the final color. So the directional light is pretty simple. It just takes, we, we calculate a light direction, then we calculate this max dot for the light direction, and then we do a reflection. So this is for diffuse, and this is for spectacle, and at the end we just times the light's color by the texture of it, and then for diffuse we times it by diff, and by for specular, we times it by spec. So this is for the, any light that comes from the sun. So we'll do the ambient light, the diffuse light, and the specular light. And then the point light is similar, except this time we do a distance and attenuation. And this, the distance gets the, well, it gets the distance between the light and the fragment we're rendering. And then attenuation is a calculation that gives us how strong should the light of a how strong should the light affect it in essence and then at the end we times them all by the lights ambient diffuse specular we add diff and spec in if we need it times the texture times the attenuation then the spotlights the same as the point light but we just add theta epsilon and intensity and this takes we determine which way the camera's facing and then we have a light cutoff and an outer cutoff, so these are two circles. And then we, intensity is an equation that calculates how bright any point in that circle should be. And then we do the same thing down here, but we also we times by attenuation and intensity. So that's how we calculate for the three lights. And then in the light fragment shader, so these are the boxes, we simply just take the light color and set it as its color. We don't do all those extra calculations. And then down in our code, right here we set the clear color, which is the background. So that's that kind of like yellowy orange sky that we have. So that's that. The directional light, we set the direction and all of these are inverted. So this means it's mainly up and a little to the X and a little to Z. Then we set ambient, diffuse, and specular. And these are the values that we multiplied by. So you can see that red is the strongest light we get and then so we kind of get this yellow or like this orangey tint on everything and then for the point lights we go through a for loop and iterate we just take point light and then their position and like we set all of them for each of them and what we do is so that's light color times 0 0.1 so a tenth of the light color becomes ambient and 130% of the light color becomes diffuse and then just regular for spectacle. And we set these three variables here to control how, how far the light actually reaches. And then down here we have the spotlight, which has those same variables, but we also have a cutoff, which is 10 degrees, and then an outer cutoff, which is 13 degrees. And then finally, we have a for loop that draws all the, the crates in and a for loop that draws the four lights in. And that gets us the result like this. 
And if you want to see what some of these variables do, we could, for example, try to create more of a horror map. So what we do there is we scroll up. Or I scroll down, I mean. What we would do is we'd probably... Maybe not. Yeah, let's just go like this. So let's... So I'm going to turn off and disable the directional light from the sky. And then I'm going to set the clear color to be pitch black. And then for our spotlight, I'm going to increase the strength from 0.8 to 100. So from 80% to 100%. And then finally, I'm going to increase the radius so that it's a bigger flashlight. And if we run this, we see that this is a a very dark map now and our and our flashlight's a little stronger and only the light from any light source and the light from our flashlight actually illuminates things. So this gives us a lot of control over creating a scene and determining the atmosphere and how the light works. But if you want to understand how ambient diffuse and specular lighting works in a simpler example, check out this video here where we cover that exact topic but with just one light and one cube. And until next time, see ya.